Why is it that most sports or performance records are broken in the evening time and not in the morning? Well, in this video, I'm going to break down the science and I'm going to teach you exactly why your performance might improve in the morning, but why your body composition might still have a better result in the evening time. Hey, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on the little bell so you can get notifications whenever I go live as well. We've got new videos coming out every Tuesday, every Friday, and every Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, plus loads of other videos sprinkled in throughout the week as well. So no better way to truly start this video off than by referencing a reputable study. This study was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology, Nutrition, and Metabolism, and it was taking a look at test subjects that trained either in the morning or in the evening. So what they did is they took 42 participants and they broke them up into either a morning group that trained between 6.30 and 10 a.m. or an evening group that trained between 4.30 and 8 p.m. And what they had them do is they had them do a traditional style one repetition maximum test. So they had them do leg press for a one rep max, and then they had them perform a certain level of wattage for a time on a stationary bike to see overall what their time to exhaustion would be. So at the end of a 24 week study, the results were pretty interesting. They found that the time to exhaustion between the two groups didn't change all that much. The morning group had an increase in time to exhaustion of 18% up to 27%, whereas the group that trained in the evening had an increase of 16 to 28%. So it was a very, very marginal difference, yet slightly better for the evening group. Where it got interesting was with the one repetition max. You see, the group that trained in the morning had an increase from 14% to 19% with their one repetition max whereas the evening group ended up having a pretty significant difference. Their improvement was from 18 to 24%. So we're talking over a five point difference for the most part. That's pretty impressive when you look at the big picture. So when we look at the muscle mass side of things though, there was still an increase on the evening training side, but not that much more than the morning side. So what are you wondering here? You're probably thinking, what the heck? Thomas is always talking about the benefits of training in the morning. But here he is saying that you're going to have more performance and more muscle mass by training in the evening. Well, there's a lot more to it than just this. And if you stick with me through the rest of this video, I'm going to explain what's truly happening from a physiological standpoint to justify why people might perform better in the evening time. But before I get into the next part of this video, there's another study that I want to reference that was published in the Journal of Chronobiology International. And this journal was really interesting in the way that it looked at repeated AM training to blunt the diurnal variation of evening performance boost. So what that means is that typically we're seeing improvements in performance in the evening versus the morning. But if you were to take someone that's training in the evening and have them shift it up to where they start repeatedly training in the morning, they can disrupt that diurnal variation. So basically what it means is right off the press, we are more conditioned to perform better in the evening. But if we repeatedly condition ourselves to train in the morning, we can disrupt that diurnal variation and become morning people. That is what I found interesting. So that's a perfect segue into why the heck this happens. Well, a lot of it has to do with our sleep-wake cycle and it has to do with our core body temperature. You see, when we wake up, our body temperature is at its lowest and it starts to rise slowly throughout the course of the day and it peaks in the early evening time. Now, when our body temperature is elevated, we have all these different improvements that occur within the body. We have increases in strength, increases in power, we have increases in mobility, and a lot of it has to do with an increase in blood flow, but a lot of it also has to do with an increase in nerve conduction. You see, when we have an increase in nerve conduction variability, it means that we can send a signal to an area of our body a lot better simply because our core body temperature is slightly skewed a little bit higher. So nerve conduction is very, very critical to performance. It's not necessarily as critical to body composition, but they do kind of go hand in hand. If you can perform better, then eventually you might end up with better body composition, but I digress. So if you have a better nerve response, you're gonna be able to react better. So you're gonna perform better in a sports setting. And considering the improvements in blood flow, you're probably gonna be able to get a little bit more oxygen to the muscle as well. So we have to remember that these enzymatic functions that occur within the body are very sensitive to very minute changes in temperature. So if we have even just a 0.1 degree increase in core body temperature, it can dramatically change how enzymes react within our bodies. They're very powerful catalysts and the temperature affects them dramatically. So if it's a little bit warmer, enzymatic functions might work a little bit differently. So that segues into training in the morning. You may not have as much power and strength training in the morning, but I still argue that the body composition effects are stronger in the morning. And they're not necessarily stronger just because of the time of the day. You see, training in the morning is truly beneficial because you're more than likely going to train fasted. And that's where I think the benefit really lands. If you were to train in a fed state in the morning, 
or a fed state in the evening, you may as well just train in the evening because honestly, it's being fed that ultimately disrupts the fat burning process. So if the fat burning situation is out of the equation and you just wanna look at performance, then train in the evening. Hands down, probably the best way to go. But when it comes down to fat burning, morning is powerful. So there was a study that was published in the Journal of Physiology that took a look at this, and it's pretty intriguing. There were nine participants, and they broke these nine participants up into either training in a fasted state in the morning or training with food in their system in the morning. So both groups trained in the morning, just one was fasted and one was not. Well, the results indicated that the fasted group definitely burned more fat. You see, we have these things called intramyocellular lipids. They're little molecules, little droplets of fat that are inside our muscles. And what this study concluded was that when we trained in a fasted state, we were able to evacuate these lipids out of the muscle and into the bloodstream to be used for fuel. Whereas if we had fed ourselves, it stopped, it halted that process. So we weren't able to utilize those intramyocellular lipids. In fact, the study found by doing a biopsy that intramyocellular lipids went from 18% down to 16% in the fasted group, meaning that their stores of fat inside the muscle went from 18% down to 6%. Well, what's gonna happen is the next day, the body's gonna take the fat from the adipose tissue and it's gonna put it into the muscle as an intramyocellular lipid, and the body's gonna burn that during a workout. So definitely, you get more of a body composition effect when you train in a fasted state versus in a fed state. So ideally, if you could go fasted throughout the course of the day and train in the evening when your core body temperature is up and you're still fasted, that would be a win-win. But not everyone can do that. But there's one other piece of the study that was also interesting. They found that glycogen synthesis increased three times in the fasted group, meaning that the group that trained in a fasted state was able to utilize three times more of the glycogen than if they had been fed, meaning their muscles were able to absorb carbohydrates or absorb protein in the form of carbohydrates, allowing them to recover and have more energy for the next day's workout. So again, if you combine the fact that if you train in the morning consistently, you can disrupt that diurnal variation, along with the fact that you're going to burn more fat, that might be the way to go, to just get yourself conditioned to training in the morning. But if you're trying to set a world record or you're trying to bench press another 15 pounds, you might wanna train in the evening time when your core body temperature is a little bit more elevated. As always, make sure that you're keeping it locked in here on this channel. If you have ideas for future videos or you wanna know more about nutrient timing and workout timing, just hit them down in the comment section below and we'll look into doing a video. I'll see you soon.